In this demonstration, we will see how ClickSense Enterprise can work with Snowflake to accelerate your path to insights. For those of you who are not familiar with ClickSense, our analytics platform is powered by a unique in-memory indexing engine. The Click Indexing Engine provides an associative experience that has clear advantages over the query-based approach of other tools. This works great for most sources and use cases, but with Snowflake, we also want to leverage the power and scalability of the underlying platform. So in the second part of this demonstration, you will see a unique way in which live queries and clicks in memory approach come together. But let's begin by creating a standard click app on top of the data mart that we built with Click Compose. All flavors of ClickSense can connect to Snowflake. In this case, I'm using the SaaS version of ClickSense Enterprise, which is a natural choice where Snowflake is the main data source. I've just created a new app and gone into the data manager where we can connect to our data source. Click provides a Snowflake connector out of the box. In this case, I've already set up a data connection to the warehouse created in our previous demonstration. I can select my data mart schema and select the tables I want to include in my data model. I can now define the relationships between these tables. Because of the way Click's analytics engine works, we need not care about the direction or cardinality of joins. And so this is a very simple task. There are powerful ETL and scripting capabilities available in ClickSense as well, but we will just go ahead and load the data in this case. I can now start creating visualizations either by choosing a chart type or simply dragging and dropping fields and letting Click's cognitive engine help to choose the appropriate visualizations. Here we can see how the visualization adapts to the two measures in one dimension I have dropped on it in order to become a scatter plot. Let's add a couple of filters as well, which we'll use later. I could even have gone straight into analysis mode and used natural language to generate content. For example, I'm interested in looking at a trend of average days taken to ship our product. This visualization has been generated on the fly by the cognitive engine's understanding of a data model. I can now add this new visualization to my sheet. As we start to interact with these visualizations, Click's associative engine applies a context across the entire app, and everything works in sync to give insights for the questions being asked. For example, selecting the latest tier of data updates the scatter plot and then selecting our top three categories updates the line chart. And of course, in both cases, our filters are being updated as well. The values in white here show me customers associated to my selections. But looking at the gray, I can also tell which of our customers did not buy products in our top three categories for this year. This is a very powerful experience for the end user and overcomes many problems associated with query-based analytics tools. Taking a quick look behind the curtains, we see that Click is able to do this because this app has built an in-memory data model based on the data extracted from Snowflake. However, Snowflake is different from standard SAR systems that generally perform poorly when bombarded with queries from analytics tools. In this case, we do want to use the power and elasticity of the platform for our benefit. This can be especially useful when the dataset is too large to practically fit in an in-memory application, or when users need to obtain the latest possible data on demand. 
To demonstrate this use case, we'll use the New York City Bike dataset, which has almost 90 million rows of data. We'll start off exploring this app using click standard in memory experience. I can drill into 2019, select Queens, and then identify which stations uh, had more than 10,000 rides. Or I can even search across the entire dataset to find city bike stations around Central Park and restrict the data to October 2019. To give this great user experience while fitting the data into an app that's less than 70 megabytes in click, we're using some smart aggregation of the data. So while we can get information on total rides, start stations, and monthly information, we have excluded more granular information, such as daily data and trip start and endpoints. For that information, we can use live queries to Snowflake. First, let's go to Snowflake and upsize our environment to handle the heavier analytics workload. This is an extremely powerful feature of Snowflake, allowing us to scale up the environment in seconds. That was it. With a single line of code, I've scaled the Snowflake warehouse to Excel. Now back and click, let's select these three stations at the south end of Central Park and go to our next sheet. This sheet is using the Dynamic Views concept, a feature released in February 2020 that allows us to use live queries within the scope of our selections. Let's jump into Snowflake to monitor the execution of these queries. The first query here gets the bulk of our data. Notice the WHERE clause. This has been dynamically generated by Click based on our selections and allows us to use a single query that will power multiple visualizations in our app. The second query gets associated weather data that was loaded into Snowflake as JSON files. Back in Click, there is a small overhead on top of these queries. This is because behind the scenes, we are building an in-memory app for this slice of data. The reason for this approach will become clear during the next bit of analysis. Now that these visualizations have been loaded, we are free to explore this slice of data with the same great associative experience that I demonstrated earlier. We can do more advanced analysis now, such as popular rides between stations. On this distribution plot, I noticed that the station on 6th Avenue has had an especially long ride. Let's select the station. On the map, we're seeing all the trips in our slice of data. Let's select that outlier that caught our attention. We can now see that ride was from Central Park 6th Avenue to J Street. The customer was a 42-year-old female, and she rode this distance over three days. We even have weather information here. So if I go up and select the start date and remove my selection on the specific ride, I can now see weather information for the whole day. Here in Snowflake, you can see that our analysis in Click did not generate any significant new queries. We were using the Click indexing engine within the slice of data that we got from just the earlier two queries. Imagine the user experience if each chart in every selection was generating a new query and multiple users were using the app. While Snowflake could handle the workload, that would still be an inferior user experience for data discovery. Another approach in Click, which in fact precedes the dynamic views concept I showed earlier, allows for a user to generate an on-demand app once they've selected a slice of data that fits certain constraints. 
In this case, the analysis we were doing earlier can be done in a standalone application. Click's approach is novel and unique in the analytics market. It lets you leverage the power and scalability of Snowflake while retaining the intuitive data discovery experience that our customers value and love.